I'm sure more people will join us. We're just going to get going because I'm talking to some really busy people. I can't have them waiting around for minutes on end to get everybody involved. We need to get started right away. Good evening, everybody. My name is Chris O'Brien. I'm Associate Director of Admissions at Boston College. Welcome to the sixth of our virtual admitted student panels. This one, titled YBC, is an easy one. I wanted to collect some pretty interesting people to talk a little bit about how they found Boston College. I bet if you're listening to us right now, watching us in some various part of the country or maybe some other part of the world, you've got an admission offer to Boston College in your hand and you're wondering, is this the place? Is this the place that's the best fit for me where I can be challenged and inspired and supported? Is this a place that's going to be the place that is going to be the community that will support me for years and years after I graduate? I'm sure you're thinking that. And what are the kind of what kind of information do you need at this late juncture? Because May 1st is quickly upon us. I think you want to talk to students. I had a place in this. I, I was one of the people that admitted you. So if I've done my part. Now what I need to do is like be a concierge, like at a hotel and say, oh, you need more? Why don't we bring this thing in? Why don't we introduce you to this person? That's what I'm doing tonight. And yeah, we have some little things. You can come to campus over the next couple of days, but maybe that's impossible for you because you're in Norway or you're in Santa Fe or you're someplace around the world. But maybe you can tune in tonight and we can give you some ideas and some really neat people that came to Boston College in the last couple of years and how they've navigated and why they stay after getting in and, and deciding to join us. So um, I'm going to have them all introduce themselves and tell a little bit of their story about what they were looking for in college and how they selected Boston College. And in the interim, we'll certainly take a few questions of people that, you know, at this late juncture are looking for something that might tip the scale to BC or whatever the discussion that might make them feel good about whatever their college choice is. There's a, a lot of expertise and wisdom here that we should really take advantage of. All right, so I have a lot of panelists, and I, I did this by design. I wanted to have, again, a lot of diversity in terms of paths to BC and different uh, experiences while you've been here. So how do I pick who would go first? How would I pick who would go first? Um, I guess the easiest one would be to go in alphabetical order, right? But let's go in alphabetical order of your first uh, name, first initial. So um, <clears throat> Bella, I, <clears throat> I'm no dummy. Bella would be first. So Bella, why don't you um, tell us who you are and, and, and where you're from and what program you're in at Boston College, what year you are, and then kind of take us back a couple of years ago when you were starting your search and what you were looking for and, and how Boston College became the place that you decided to uh, enroll and why we're so happy that you did. Just give us a little bit of that background. Hi, everyone. My name is Bella. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm studying psychology here on the pre-med track and I have a minor in English. Um, so being from Vegas, BC wasn't really on my radar till like junior year of high school. My school got the opportunity to come here on a college trip and it was actually the week before COVID. So just like everything seemed to align perfectly. <laughs> um, and then BC kind of came onto my radar and I was like, wow, like I need to sell this to my parents because my dad, um, his entire side of the family is from the Pacific Northwest. So everyone went to like University of Washington, like those schools. Um, and then my mom is from Venezuela. So she had no idea about like schools on the East Coast either. So I was like, okay, this school seems great. It has what I want in terms of service. Um, Cause I did a lot of that in high school. The location was really appealing to me cause I wanted to explore like a different part of the country. And also the whole faith formation aspect of BC was really appealing because I went to a secular high school. So just exploring what my faith means to me in a different way was really appealing. Um, and as far as why I stay, it's immediately everyone became family to me. The school is so comforting and especially being so far from home, it's so comforting to be here. Um, and what's really unique about it is that I found like I was nervous about like, oh, everyone wants to do service and like, where am I gonna fit into that? But your identity really gets you where you need to go. Like I grew up speaking Spanish at home. So through my Pulse service this year, I'm in East Boston at the health center and that's uniquely in Spanish, um, speaking with the patients. Um, and then I recently went on an Arupe trip to El Salvador and I got to be like the interpreter for my group. So that was really awesome. Just seeing 
like my identity inter intersect with my passion for service and all different things like that. So those have been some of my highlights so far. And Bella, that's fantastic. And we may circle back to some of those things in, as terms of, in terms of uh, threads that weave through a lot of people's experiences here, like service. But one thing I know about you, Bella, is that you went to a pretty small high school. Yeah, it's far away. But the second was that it's a pretty small, tight community. Do you think that that was an advantage to you because, you know, you were, you know, dealt with so many adults and you were able to access so many things and build such confidence? Or was it a tough transition because now you're with 9,000 people and you've never had to fight for things? You've always had it come a lot easier to you. So just quickly for those people that are tuning in that come from smaller schools, should they be in for a big learning curve or are they have it better than they think because of some of the things they learned at going to a small high school? Yeah, so my high school was K through 12 and my graduating class was 58 kids. And a lot of those were like, we started together in kindergarten or first grade. Um, so I was really nervous initially coming here, but it actually was the smoothest transition. And I don't know if that was because I was used to kind of building relationships with professors. Um, and actually most of the classes I'm in are smaller except for like the intro level classes but I actually found that it was a huge advantage coming here. And um, I found that just the way I approached academics set me up a little easier than like some of my friends who came from huge public schools. Great point, great point. <clears throat> Thanks, Bella. All right, moving around and again, relying on my liberal arts education and my knowledge of the alphabet, it takes me to Colin. So Colin, same thing, let's hear a little bit about your story to come to Boston College and learn a little bit about you, uh, where you're from, what you study, what year are you here? Yeah, so uh, I am a sophomore from Elmhurst, Illinois, just outside Chicago, uh, and I'm studying finance, math, and business analytics, uh, so a lot of quantitative stuff. But uh, yeah, deciding college was definitely an interesting experience for my year in particular. Uh, I graduated in 2021, so tours weren't really open my senior year or in the latter half of my junior year. So I didn't get to visit Boston College until, what is it, April 25th, probably about two years ago to the day almost. Um, I ended up making my decision, I want to say a week before decision day. Um, and what led me to that, I was choosing between Boston College and like a much larger public university. And the thing that after talking to several students uh, who were at BC, the thing that really stuck with me was the community that they all, um, as Bella talked about and as they all champion, um, a community of students who really want to help each other, um, where service is heavily emphasized and not only where we help our fellow students, but also the outside community, um, as well as uh, the Jesuit values of reflection was something that I really, uh, really thought was interesting. I went to a public high school, so I didn't get to experience a lot of that um, benefits of a more religious institution. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it, valuing all those things like community and reflection. And for you to say that the community was nice and you're from the Midwest where supposedly everybody's supposed to be nice, that says a lot about who you found here on campus. That's good, Colin. Um, but let me let me pick up on this and let me blend in a question that came in through the Q&A. Someone's talking about assumptions that you may have had when you came to Boston College uh, and and were those assumptions on the money or, or had they dissipated? Let me turn it and, and pivot it a little bit differently and say, what's been the biggest surprise coming to Boston College. Uh, you mentioned the Jesuit part and you know most students come to us from public high schools. Maybe you didn't understand how that would manifest itself and it's been a pleasant surprise. Maybe it's been the academics, maybe it's been Boston. I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but tell me, you tell me, what's been the biggest surprise since you've been here? Biggest surprise, I think, I, so again, like I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of opportunity to visit BC. It was really just um, what a lot of other students had said. And one thing that I never really got around to talking to them was about our sports culture. I'm from the Midwest, I'm from Illinois. So my idea of uh, college football is like Big Ten, SEC, going to those games. Um, never really had much of an exposure to the ACC before. And I remember my first football game was like, oh, you know, I got my gold pass. I got my season tickets. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go tailgating, expecting like 
very small ish crowd and very tame. No, it was, it was an absolute blast. We had all of our parking garages filled up the mod lot, uh, the parking lot in front of the stadium was totally filled. There was an auxiliary parking lot that was also just full and it was so much fun. Um, that was a very pleasant surprise of how much we absolutely love our sports teams, uh, especially football and hockey. Well, let's hope they surprise us with a winning record in the fall. Yeah. That would be a, a much, a very pleasant surprise. Hopefully. Uh, all right. Moving around the Zoom, next would be Jen Castro, who's speaking to us from a very bucolic location. Like, look out your window, and it seems like Boston, it, you must not be at Boston College, so close to the city. You must be some rural location. Uh, like, look out your window. It looks so nice. Uh, but Jen, regardless of the location, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us how you found Boston College. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jen Castro. I am a freshman coming to you from Cheverus Dorm on Upper. Um, if you didn't know, there's two campuses, one on Newton, where 40% of the freshmen live, but this is my view right from my dorm room. Um, I am a freshman in the Carroll School of Management, and right now I'm on the marketing track, but I still have time to pick my major, so I'm not exactly sure yet. And going back to the question that you just asked, um, kind of when I was deciding on a college, it was extremely important for me to take into, into consideration the size of the school I'd be attending. Um, I came from a very small high school as well, and I was kind of worried about making those um, connections in the interactive classes that I was like taking in high school and was worried about making the adjustment to college. Um, most of the colleges kind of have the stigma of the lecture hall size class, which is what I assumed coming into BC, but it really, really surprised me when I came in because most of my classes are actually just 20 to 30 people. Um, which I've only had one lecture hall size class so far in my freshman year, um, which is a really great environment to be in as the professors here like kind of foster a safe learning environment as they encourage you to get like more out of your education than just like passing the course. They kind of want you to make those deeper connections within the classroom with your peers and with your professors as well, which was something that really surprised me coming into a school with a lot of undergraduates as well. question that I was going to ask, but I'll give her credit for it, um, for asking it first, is now that you're almost done with your first year, congratulations, and talk a little bit about balancing some of the things that you want to do outside the classroom to enrich your experiences, whether that's leadership or cultural events or you know, just having a good time working at whatever that might be, and the academic part of life and, and the parts that's serious about your intellectual development and maybe even at this young age, career exploration. So can you talk about how, how you manage them both? If you, first of all, if you manage them both, <laughs> this could have been a horrible failure, but if you have managed them both, which I think is the right answer, um, talk about how you do it. How do, how do Boston College students, how did you particularly do it to make the most out of your first year? Um, I think it's really important to find a good schedule and have like a very organized time management when you first get here. Um, I think that you're kind of thrown into a lot of things when you first get here. It's a really active, like tight knit community and everybody kind of wants to get involved. And there are so many opportunities for you to do that, but almost not enough time in the day. So the way that I've been able to adjust is just like making a planned schedule and being able to get from point A to point B during my day and just kind of managing my time and trying out everything honestly. I mean, I think that it's just so important to get involved in every way possible, just because you could find your interests through that way. Like, for example, um, there's a lot of core requirements in CSOM, which was kind of a dreading, like, Thing hanging over my head coming into school, but it's actually allowed me to take classes that I think that I would have never been interested in before, such as um, there's a core requirement for a natural science, and right now I'm in a course called Protecting Our Oceans, which is something I would have never taken on my own as a business major, but going into the class where we study the ocean and we talk about equitable solutions in the like wake of our climate change right now, it's been super, super interesting to get like a different perspective on different subjects in class. So I think that that's really helpful. And just like having a good schedule to manage all of your time and what you want to do. And as for extra curriculars, excuse me, um, in the beginning of the year, we have this huge fair where all of the clubs kind of line up on the quad and you're able to just walk around and see what you want to get involved with. So my recommendation is to just go to everything as possible, like everything that you can possible and just be as present as you can. Get it all done, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right, good, good. Thanks, Jen. That was great. 
Uh, all right, three down, three to go. And these three have been awesome, Kate. So, I mean, to have to go next, what pressure? But um, but still, we have we have we have a few more minutes to fill. So, Kate, let's hear a little bit about you and your journey to BC. Okay, well, I'll try my best to <laughs> do that. But, um, I'm Kate. Um, I'm from Winchester, Massachusetts. Uh, so, like thirty minutes north of BC. Um, I'm a computer science. I'm a currently sophomore, um, and I'm a computer science major with a finance minor. Um, and I'm studying in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and I think what really brought me to BC was the people. Um, I think that there are a ton of great schools out there which have like amazing classes, but BC is really unique in the community and the students and the alumni and the teachers. And I knew all these because I live close, um, there are some alumni who live in my town, and I know some kids in the grades above me who go to BC, and the other kids from my grade who came. Um, everyone I know who came to BC or went to BC or is currently going to BC is just amazing and like an incredible person, and I could brag about them for hours. Um, and I think that's really unique to this school, and I think it comes from the sense of like well-roundedness and uh, like all the students care about their education and they they also care about being good human and and service and the community and their interests and really pursuing things that they're passionate in um and so i think that's just like in it, you can totally see anywhere you go, everyone's smiling, everyone's laughing, everyone's working hard. The tailgates are a great example because it really is, a, you go to the tailgates and every different tailgate is talking to you. Like people you've never even met are like happy and inviting you over to talk with them. And it's just overall, even like the gym, um, you go to the gym and people come up and they talk to you and they're like, oh, like, that's really cool. Could you show me how to do this? Or could like, like, it's just a really, BC is a very unique and awesome community to be in. And that's what brought me here. Hey, what were you the most nervous about when you were looking? Were you more nervous about the academics? Like, oh my God, computer science, it's going to be hard. Is that the right job I'm going to have? Am I going to have a career for 45 years and then retire being a computer scientist? Were you more nervous about like friends? Like, you know, you seem very friendly and you seem like, you know, you've these alleged friends that you've accumulated over the years seem like they're nice people. Like, were you more nervous about the social transition? Were you more nervous about getting a roommate? Were you more nervous about that, the academic part? And um, hopefully by now, you're not so nervous about whatever you were the most nervous about. And if so, what happened to make you feel more comfortable in that area? So tell me about what you were most nervous about and tell me how you got over that. Yeah, I was pretty nervous about my roommate, but she ended up being awesome. We lived on Newton on the um, satellite campus, which is only like a, I would say like five minute bus ride and the buses come all the time. So I was, and I was nervous about living on Newton, but I would say living on Newton was incredible. I made so many friends. I'm currently in, we have these eight man rooms, which are uh, four sets of doubles and a common room. And everyone in my eight man was on my floor freshman year. Um, and I'm roommates again with the roommate that I had last year. So that really, I shouldn't have been that nervous about. Um, we really, we stuck together and which she was just great. And honestly, every, like everyone on my floor last year was great. So we all hung out a lot, which made it a lot of an, e it made it much easier to transition. Um, and I was also nervous about the classes because I came in undecided. Um, and so I, there was a little bit of a journey to get to computer science with some econ in there, some like econ minor, finance minor, computer science major, but the core requirement really got me um, to computer science. So that was another benefit of having the core, um, yeah. And you, and you got there and you got there. Right? I did get there. <laughs> That's great, Kate. Thanks. Okay. We're heading to the home stretch here. Uh, we'll go up to, to Liz. 
Uh, Liz, again, these introductions have been so good. The pressure continues to mount. Let's deliver. Let's deliver in a real new Trier high school fashion. Who you are, what you study, and then a little bit of your journey to BC. Yeah, um, my name is Liz Payne. I'm from Wilmette, Illinois, so also close to Chicago. I'm right now a freshman in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences studying international studies. And the way I came to choose BC, I remember when I was first looking for colleges, getting a, a checklist of things that I wanted at, at a school that I was looking for. And I remember seeing the list and just wanting everything that was there, wanting a awesome campus feel, wanting to be close to a city, school that wasn't too big, um, was some, somewhat mid-sized. I wanted to have sports teams. I wanted to have a vibrant social life, academics. And BC really, as someone said earlier, is just so well-rounded and hit on every single one of those boxes that I was looking for. I also remember hearing about BC from a relative that I'd had um, who came here and talking with them for over an hour, an hour and a half, just all about BC. And since then, I just loved every second of it. And I just knew that I had to come to BC. And then I also had to convince my parents about it too, because they had never come to Boston, never really heard about the school. And even though I wasn't able to visit, I just knew that it was going to be an awesome fit. About just talking a little bit more about the academic rigor. Mm -hmm. I would imagine with all of you, 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 you work so hard to get here. You don't want to coast. You want to keep working hard. You have high expectations of yourself. So, and, and Liz, you know, like a lot of you guys, all of you guys, you had friends that went to top universities around the, around the country and you probably still talk to them. So, yeah. I mean, has this been challenge? Has, has BC been, first of all, been challenging enough? Has it been too challenging? Is it competitive? Is it collaborative? Like what's the climate? What's the culture around academics? Has it been, what you wanted? Has it been a little bit tougher, not as tough? Like just even after a year, maybe you've got a sense of what the expectations are of yourself and what you think the expectations are of BC for you to, to, to get the academic work and push yourself academically. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I came from a really competitive high school too. So academic rigor was something I was used to, but being at BC, I think it's a different kind of academic rigor. When, it, when you're in your high school, you're mostly just worried about learning just the information, getting a good grade, and then passing the class. Here at BC, it's different. It feels like you want to engage with the material more, and your teachers are asking you to do that. They want you to make those connections and look deeper within um, if it's a text you're looking at or the problem that you're um, looking at in the global sense. I think our classes also give a really good structure for that. We have a lot of time for reflection in certain classes that you can take, which ask you to look at bigger problems of social justice, problems that affect us and how we see ourselves in the world. And I think that's a very different from a lot of even friends that I have who are also at rigorous academic institutions that BC wants to develop that um, well-rounded nature. And I'm just going to ask like, where you do most of your homework, studying, papers. Uh, how many people do the, the majority of their schoolwork at the library? Okay. Uh, that leaves two of you. Do the two of you do the majority of your work in your residence hall? Okay, Jen. Um, do you do it at El Pallone, uh, Starbucks, uh, on the T? Like, where are we doing our work? My favorite building is actually the new building, um, 245 Beacon Street. Yes. I think the lighting in there is perfect to do work. It gives, it's super bright. Um, the building's super new and awesome, and it gives great lighting and motivation to get all of your work done. So that's my favorite spot for sure. Well, I'm glad it was an academic building. I was going to check your GPA after this call just to see if you did any work. So, Jen, you came through. Good answer. Great answer. All right. Hidden cleanup. Last but not least, let's hear it. Tell us a little bit about your story, how you got to BC, a little bit about yourself. Um, hi, my name is Sun. I am a freshman I'm studying biology in the pre-med track. Um, and I'm from Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is like 40 minutes from Atlanta. Um, and how I got to BC. My story is a bit different um, from the rest. So I applied to BC through QuestRidge, which is a um, scholarship. And 
um, the way that it worked is that they would, the quest bid would um, partner with a particular number of schools and you had to choose um, choose a school through them. Uh, and there weren't as many options. I think there were like 30 schools that I could apply to and BC was one of them. And I really drew on my past experiences. When I when choosing BC, I went, I did dual enrollment. So I went to a actual uh, university uh, in Georgia and it was a very large university with a large, lot of students. And I felt very lonely. I didn't feel connected with the community. I didn't feel connected with uh, school, the teachers. And so the most important thing for me was like going to a campus where community was really important important and um and I think that and I like looked at all the schools I did some research I watched these kind of interviews and I really found BC to be the top of my choice and that's how I came to BC videos that must have sealed the deal so son uh, you're welcome you yeah, thank you for this. but let's boil down to this year all right you're just about at the finish line of your freshman year congratulations right um so what do you think what was the best decision you made this year to get you to the finish line? All you made, a, you make a ton of decisions about what classes to take, what clubs to join, you know, what sides to get with your chicken. Like, all right. So, you know, we all know you have a lot of decisions to make. What was the best decision you made that you think got you to the end of freshman year? I think it was doing APA. Um, APA is a service-based uh, program where we um, in Boston College where we go to different parts in the United States and we do a community service. I went to Kentucky and did Habitat, which um, I built houses in um, Kentucky. And that program was such a life-changing experience to go out of your comfort zone to a community that's um, that's very different from your own and to like talk with these people and hear their experiences, hear their stories that really kind of put a perspective on my life. I think before then I was complaining a lot. I was, I just wasn't, it was, it was a lot, a lot was going on with my courses, with my academics, was going to that trip and like being in a place where you're not thinking about yourself, but other people really helped me like push myself to the final, final line. Think about all your friends, most of your friends for spring break, like they go to Mexico and they lie in a big vat of Heineken and they forget all the things they learn in school. And you know, Boston College students do things like this. That's that's awesome. That's what makes our community really unique and special. So that was that. Thanks for sharing that. That was great. Um, all right. So, again, a couple of questions I want to address um, with everybody and whoever feels most comfortable or I'll call on people, however we want to do it. Um, most of you guys went to public schools. Liz, I know. Colin, I know. Kate Winchester High School. Bella went to a private school, but not really a, a religious school, right? Uh, and Jen, you went, where did you go to high school? I went to Canterbury. It was a preparatory, Catholic preparatory school. Yeah, so, and and not the most Catholic, but certainly a place that has Catholic, uh, a Catholic structure. So I think, you know, some of the question was, what if you're not Christian? What if you're not Catholic? What if you're not very spiritual? Like, how do you wrap your head around how the fact that the school is Jesuit Catholic and would be, and, and how does it manifest itself if you're not very spiritual Catholic? And, you know, all of us, you know, are in charge of our own spirituality. But but again, most of you are, weren't coming from areas where it was something you had had in school every day. So maybe one or two of you can talk a little bit about how this has worked for you. Did you know much going into it? Has that been a big surprise? Has it changed over the course of a couple of years that you've been here? Maybe a couple of you can just, you know, raise your hand real quick and maybe contribute what you think of the fact that we're Jesuit, that identity and, and how it's affected you, if at all. Go ahead, Bella. So yeah, my high school was not um, really religious at all. And personally, I grew up Catholic, but not like a strict Catholic. Um, so when I got to BC, I was kind of like open to um, what I had to offer. I was just excited to kind of navigate my faith while I was here. And I think it took up until like the beginning of my sophomore year when I started Pulse and started, um, and Pulse is a class that fulfills the philosophy and theology core at BC. And it includes a service learning component. So you're paired with a community partner in Boston. Um, so I'm at the East Boston Health Center. Um, so once I started Pulse and started my Arupe meetings, which is an international immersion program, both of those 
programs are faith-based, um, but it's faith through service, which is where I found like the Jesuit ideals and like what I had grown up with, like all of that was intersecting in those two programs. So I think that really helped me understand where faith made sense. And also another thing that's really cool about BC, and I've been thinking about this a lot because we just had our Ever to Excel award ceremony yesterday. And those are awards that it's through the Office of Student Involvement and they're given to students who like faith and service is a priority for them and like a defining factor of their BC experience. Um, and I was thinking about like the academic awards that we had in our high school where it was all like, okay, like it's all based on grades and stuff like that. I just find BC to really care about the whole person in that way. So I think that's a really special thing we have. Oh, it's a great answer, Bella. Anybody else wanna add a little bit to how they found how the Jesuit identity of Boston College intersected, manifested itself with them that maybe they didn't see coming or maybe they didn't expect it to be a big part of their life and and it turned out to be. Good, Colin. Yeah, I think uh, at least for me, the a major difference between what I kind of learned in high school uh, at a public high school versus what I'm learning here at BC is a large emphasis uh, here at BC on why we're learning what we're learning, how we can use what we learn to better other people and better society and to, to continue to be uh, people for others, um, one of our mottos at BC. Um, and yeah, how we can really just this huge emphasis on helping others and using uh, what we learn at school to do that. Going to like spin it a little bit of a different way. And like you guys, since you're older now, you don't remember what it was like, you know, to have the odometer spin back to zero after having these monster high school careers. You were the captain of this, you were the president of that, you gave the senior speech, you're a leader and identified with so many things on your campus. And then you come here as a freshman and you're the president of nothing. Like you got to start all over again. And that must be very humbling. And then to try to like work through the inertia and, and make your mark, whether that's in service or organizations or leadership, student government or auditioning for a play or an acapella group, things that you were so much, so much of your identity in high school that, you know, you can't walk around your freshman year saying, you know, I was kind of a big deal in high school, you know, like that's not how it works. Uh, so can any of you talk a little bit about whether that's been frustrating for you, how you work through those frustrations and how you've been able to get a part in student clubs, organizations, activities on campus, even though, again, you walk in here as a freshman, not knowing anybody and not having them know anything about your great history back in high school. And again, just show you, raise one. Yeah, go ahead, Liz. Yeah, I think, like you said, it can be a little overwhelming, but also a little revealing. Uh, uh, just like you can make your own, um, you can make your own identity once you get to college. And it's a bit of a relief that, you can define who you are. And I think the one thing that I love about BC is that because there's so many people engaged in different clubs, and that's a huge part of how you get involved, that it's a lot more meaningful than just, you know, joining like a sorority or fraternity and just being put together for no reason. It's based on what you find interesting, what you're driven by, what you want to do with your life and all different clubs. There's a club for probably everything at BC. And it feels a lot more meaningful, the connections that you make, because it's based on a deeper connection that you guys have. Great point. Great point. Yeah, go ahead, Kate. I also think that like you, like you're a superstar in high school or whatever, and you come in and now you're with all these other kids who are like also like the superstars of their high school. Um, and so like now you really have this like good chance to be on like a nice even like playing field with everyone and you really do get to choose things that like you're more interested in instead of just because a lot of times in high school also like no one wants to say it but some some of the things you do like you do to look good for college and now you finally get this yeah um, you, I don't know who would do that but I know that people do but not kids from Winchester High no, no way. obviously yeah no one from Winchester but you get, you get this chance to do things that you're like genuinely passionate about. And it's also great because 
you don't need to go to these like club meetings with friends because like people are friendly and people are passionate. And so like, it's not things that you have to do with other people, which can be like a scary thing, but it's great to like know and understand that you could really walk into any of the clubs and all the club leaders and the other members are so happy to have you that you don't need to bring like this big group of like, background like your friends to like know that you belong in different places Jen you know we'll start with you and maybe a couple other people can answer as well what if you're not okay at Boston College what if you get a 13 on your organic chemistry test what if you know the being away from home or not being the president of every club affects your your mental health, affects the way you put, you know, the, the way you're eating, the way you're sleeping, like your your vision of yourself. When you're not okay at Boston College, uh, is that okay? And have you started to see and learn about what are the resources for you or anybody if you're not okay? I think the first thing that like every incoming freshman should know is that everybody's going through the same thing. So when you first come into the dorm, obviously everybody knows that the first night is the worst sleeping alone after your parents come and drop you off and you're in this forbidden and like unknown place. And I think it could be definitely overwhelming and scary. But I think that this community is so warming and like heartfelt that there are people all around looking to help you. I mean, for me, I found very like, personal connections with just my professors in the beginning. Um, those are, that's the first resource that you can use. Um, they're an easy adult on campus to have access to. I know all of my professors host office hours, which I take advantage of not to just go ask questions about the content or if I'm confused, but just to get to know them more as a human being almost. Um, coming from a small high school as a preparatory school, I was very, very close with my teachers. They lived on campus and that's something I truly valued because I felt like they knew me as a person and not just as as a student and coming here I think that it's very very easy to create those relationships you just have to be willing to go out of your way to do that and I think in the end it becomes very beneficial because I've learned that having a mentor in the subjects where I'm very interested in can be helpful for a wide variety of things and now I don't go to them just for school advice but also life advice as well and career advice and I can act honestly say that I can go and ask them any questions and they'll always be there for help so that's the first step but I think that there's just so many other resources that you could go to or find and also I find it to be a very warming and friendly campus here I think that like everywhere you go there's people holding the doors open always looking for a conversation so I really think it's a truly warming environment and yeah it's scary but everybody goes through it together so between a freshman and a senior in high school like freshmen and seniors in high school don't don't connect like you know how how dare you but the difference between a freshman and senior in college is you're both adults like it's not that big of a golf and i hope like jen talked about mentoring thinking about like adults and students but there's mentoring that happens all the time with older students as a first year student have have you been able to like learn from be mentored by talk to older students and has that advice that mentorship been helpful yeah huh. most Go ahead, son. You go first. Sorry, I thought my mic was on mute for some reason. Yo, go, go ahead. Um, sorry, Jen. Um, I I just wanted to say that for me, like one of I just I just had a recent experience with a class um, where it was academically really really hard and really rigorous, and I was not doing um, great at it at all. Um, and I went on a three hour phone call with uh, my Apple leader. Who, who is a senior right now. And we talked for three hours about just like why it's why I'm struggling and what I can do to um, to move on from it. And I think like that's something that I've really, really like found um, helpful. And I didn't realize that it was possible for a senior and junior to like really help me when I first started. Um, but that just like going to different clubs and meeting all these like amazing people and who are really willing to help you has been such an amazing experience. And I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> No, that's great. That's great. Jen, finish that off. 
Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, I'm in a club called Women in Business where it's kind of one of those clubs. Where it's one of the biggest clubs on campus. And basically you can kind of pick and choose which meetings you want to go to based on your interests. Um, they have like an attendance code and that kind of tracks like your ranking within the club. But they have a mentorship program where you're paired with an upperclassman where basically if you've ever been on a sports team before in high school and you have like the big little where you have like that older mentor. Um, I found that in Women in Business and it's actually been great for everything, like I said, before that a teacher would do for you or a professor it's the same just as life advice school advice social advice just everything I think it's really easy to find those people like who are willing to take younger kids under their wing because everybody was that younger kid at one point so I think there's just a lot of empathy on this campus to go around and everybody's looking to help out so it's been an awesome experience adjusting as a freshman like you either got one or two years or three years, well, two or three years left. Let's talk about what's on our bucket list. What What's what's something big that we want to do before our time at BC is done? It could already be there. You could already have it scheduled, a class or a study abroad opportunity research, or it could be something that you haven't got quite close to yet, but you know you want to do it. So again, let's go in that alphabetical order again. So, so, so Bella, tell us, you know, you got a couple of years left at BC. What's the most important thing you want to get done before the time's up? Yes. So kind of on the, the theme of mentors, um, I wanted to be an orientation leader. So I'm doing that this summer. Um, I'm also going to be an ever to excel mentor for like the last week of the summer. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I'm studying abroad in Madrid next spring. So that was definitely something that's been on my bucket list for like all of life, not just college. Um, but the biggest thing I think is senior year, I really want to be an Arupe leader because um, I already went on an immersion trip. So the only way you can go again is if you lead it um, your junior or senior year. So those are just a couple. Oh, and research too. I'm on the pre-med track. So I would love to get involved in that. And there's like nine. It's like the point, the point was made and, um, and you're going to be in Boston all summer. You'll be disappointed it only gets to 90 in the summer. Vegas is a nice toast. Not like our 110. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Good stuff. How about how about you, Colin? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it would definitely be leading APA. Uh, I went on APA as well last spring, and it was at, like one of the best experiences ever. Um, me and my group were got absolutely so close. My leaders have been amazing mentors ever since. Um and I would like to be able to pay it forward and uh, one day, probably my senior year, be able to lead. That's an awesome one. Well done. All right. Uh, next, Jen. Um, for me, I think this was a big year of kind of like figuring things out and just seeing like my place and where I want to be. So what I'm the most excited for in the future and next year is just to find like my place and where I want to be in extracurriculars. I think I tried like maybe to go to 30 different club meetings this year, just trying everything because that's what I was advised to do. So I think it's it's really important for me to kind of just find those one or two like really um, things that kind of grab my attention and that I want to focus on, um, which I'm excited to find. And I think there's so many opportunities for that as well. <clears throat> student admissions program, <clears throat> student admissions program, just saying. Yes, for sure. Thanks, Jen. Well done. All right, Kate. Okay, I have two. One is a recent uh, bucket list edition because my volleyball team didn't get a mud stock um, slot or yeah so we we want to play in the mud stock volleyball volleyball tournament um, on the last day of classes um, and that's pretty it's a little lottery to get so that's definitely on my bucket list and then more academically I would really love to do um some sort of computer science uh, research position. Um, there's a lot of cool opportunities with all the professors here. So I'd love to do that. Yeah, and I would say both are equal, right? Both are equal. All right, good stuff, Kate, Liz. Um, being international studies, I'm super, super excited to study abroad. Um, my junior year, not sure where yet, but definitely somewhere. Um, and I'm also super excited 
um, just to take more classes that I find interesting, that challenge me, that um, fit into things that I am passionate about that may not go along with my major. So finding a minor that I really like, something that's interdisciplinary, I'm excited just to try out some new classes. Last again, son, not least, but last. Um, I also want to have two things that I really, really want to do. Um, um, hold on. Just this is a very typical Boston College thing. When you ask them for one thing, they give you two. This is always the case. Can I say, tell me your favorite professor? Well, I'll tell you two. So you're you're right on brand with talking about BC, son. Great job. Um, thank you. Uh, obviously, I want to lead up. I, I just amazing experience. I love that so much. I also applied to be a counsel in SAP. Um, so if I don't get it this year, eventually I'll try to get in. Okay, I know some people. I'll see what I could do. See what I could do. Uh, and can you believe it? I, we're having so much fun. We've filled 45 minutes already. I can't believe it. Hey, um, while I'm while I'm stalling and wrapping this up, can you guys put your email addresses in your little signature for anybody that wants to uh, keep the conversation going? And I'll give you, I'll stall for like 45 seconds as you do it. But I, hopefully those of you that tuned in found this very interesting. I mean, I, I think, you know, my idea of putting this group together was just to hear a lot of different stories, not of seniors that have one foot out the door, but students that you could see on campus. Although Bella will be in Madrid, Colin will be in Dublin, Kate will be in Paris. So you'd have to travel a little bit further to see them for, for some parts of next year. But these are typical BC students and to hear their stories and how candid they were and how thoughtful they were with not just their decision to come to Boston College, but how they do things at Boston College. I thought it was really impressive. I thought all you guys did such a great job and, and we didn't script this at all. There was no rehearsal today. This was all you guys. And um, it was really impressive. And I really, I think this goes to show that Boston College students are very interested in, you know, their community. They, they would invest their time in talking to you and, and uh, seeing that if you're going to decide to join us, that you do it with all the information in front of you. Uh, so they, have, they put the, all their email addresses in, the mail, in their uh, camera boxes. So if you want to keep the conversation going, they've offered to do that. Just reach out to them. Uh, so again, it's the 25th of April. We have a few days left. Uh, on your admission uh, portal, uh, you would find all the videos that we've done, not just here in the spring, but some that we did in the fall about different aspects of life at BC. I don't think they'd beat this one, but they're all pretty good. I'm just saying because I was part of them all. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And to my panelists, fantastic job. And I mean it. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. For those of you viewing, good luck with your decisions. Hopefully we see you up in Chestnut Hill in a few months. Uh, let us know if there's anything else that we can do for you going forward. Good luck with your search. Go Eagles. Thanks everybody for joining us. Good night, everyone.